I used to be a very big cry baby, but to today I'm still crying baby. Cause sometimes when you watch drowns, they can ask you questions you don't know it. They finish you on the spot. Come on, baby. Anything will happen, baby. Have it. Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Chidera Haka. I'm a fifth year MBBS student. In this video, I'm going to be giving you guys the things that I feel like. Since I've been in medical school for the past four years, I feel like these things will not help you. This video is not even a time wasting video. Sharp, 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 sharp. Let's get it. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. If you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe if you like my content. You know, support a girl. The first thing I'm going to tell you is if you're someone that doesn't like working with people, if you're not a team player, if you're not a team player, uh, I think you may have to try and work on that. You have to try and learn how to be a team player. <laughs> because in medical school, there's a lot of interaction, you know, like a lot of time, like you may not even have to interact with the whole class. It may just be four people in the class that you know. You know how we always say that there's a lot of work in med school, like you can't read everything. Sometimes you think you've read something, but you've not read it. And so people, other people beside you would help you. So sometimes you may gather and it's one thing that one person says that, you, that will not help you with your exam. Because medicine is usually about what I know, bring it with what you know, bring it with other person knows, bring it together and try to gain knowledge from each other. So in med school, because of the volume of workload, you need to learn to be a team player. Like even if you don't have a lot of friends, just get, get maybe three, four people that you can once in a while exchange ideas or exchange knowledge with. Are people that you underestimate, <laughs> people that you underestimate can help you get your distinction. You may be like, okay, this person knows, but you know more than this person. The person will tell you something, you get to the exam more. That person told you what you write. Even in practice, eventually you will have to learn how to work with people. Only you cannot go and save the patients now. You work with the nurses and every other person. So it's just a skill that you should just try to acquire. Two or three people can go a long way in modifying your medical journey. Cry babies. People like me. I used to be a very big cry baby, but to today I'm still a cry baby. If you're a cry baby, you need to stop crying. <laughs> you need to learn how to start working on how you start sorting out your issues without you necessarily crying about things. Because I used to be somebody that used to cry a lot. Ah, no, 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 no. In medical school, you work under a lot of pressure. You work under pressure a lot. You'll be under pressure. Your professional exams, there's a lot of pressure. Like, you'll be trying to read and try to. And the thing is that those days I'll be trying to read. It's not as if I'm scared of failure. That's not my fear. My fear is I have goals I set for myself. I try to put work into making sure those goals come to life. So if it's looking like I'm not getting, like I'm not, I'm not finished covering a particular, you get like pressure, detention, and everything, and I'll just be so, so down, and then I'll just, I'll still start feeling so scared, and I'll start crying and crying, and I was always crying. Almost every serious exam I had, I would shed like some tears. There was one exam I wrote, I nearly failed the exam because of crying. No. Clinical pathology, my pros. I went right to the exam hall and I was crying because we had two exams that day clinical pathology and hematology. We usually have two, and it's very frustrating having to read for both. We have pharmacology Monday, mobile anatomy Tuesday. So it's one one paper per day. And this, these courses are large. But clinical part and hematology, you have to put them on the same day, and it was just terrible. Like having to read both courses, like, oh no. So that day I was really under a lot of pressure and did not more than stay crying. I broke into tears. And it was really bad for me because when I got to the exam, one, even the ones I knew, I forgot. And it was so sad. Just because I wasn't stable. That's the, the exam now came. And it wasn't even things I didn't know. It was things, some things I actually knew them, some things I actually read them. But then, because of the fact that I was very unstable that morning, things I read flew out of my head. So, don't cry until there is need to cry. One doctor told me that thing for my mobile anatomy exam that crying will not help you as a doctor. When you want to see patients and all of that, it's not your tears that would help save that patient. It's you putting your emotions aside and trying to figure out the best way to handle that situation. And since then, I've been trying to not cry. Even though I still cried after one exam like this. Even... <laughs> so if you are soft, you will need to build tough skin because consultants, oh God. Consultants, during what rounds, they can ask you questions, you don't know it, they finish you on the spot. You have to try and build up tough skin to withstand some of these things. Working under pressure, getting a lot of backlashes from consultants because if you don't know it 
they would give it to you hot hot. They can they ask you how how did you even pass your exam? Ask you, how did you even are you sure you crossed? Are you sure you wrote your professional exam? Are you sure you are the one that wrote it? And you can't just bust out into tears at every single time somebody does that to you. Yeah, I've been trying to film up since I that medical. Doing things last minute. Yes. Doing things last minute. I used to be a very big advocate of that. I used to do my things last minute. As much as I cry under pressure, something very funny about me is I work better under pressure. Before I get to that point where I have to be reading, like if adrenaline is not there, I find it very difficult to sit down and read. And even if I sit down and read with the book, I will not be, it's not be entering my head. For some very funny reason, I won't be able to assimilate until it is pressing, until it's getting very close to the exam. I will now start. But then over time, I have to start learning how to at least... Being last minute doesn't really help. Try to at least start early. Try to start early. Because being the last minute person, people, people in med some people in medical school do it. I have people that used to read deal of physiology in first module that time in when we're in tour we read all of physiology first module overnight and go write exam the next morning but that thing didn't work for me if you're someone like who likes to work on that profession just start maybe play with the books a bit early i had to try and learn that too even if i'm not even i just try and force myself to go over it force myself to go over it i know that when the time comes for me to boom boom bang bang i will still jack it but like I just I try to start reading and it helps because sometimes one of those things I come down to read, I will not even have time to go back to them again. So if you're a last minute person like me, like I used to be, then you may have to start trying to prepare yourself mentally to drop that straight and try to start early because starting early, consistency, uh, because the workload is plenty, you can't just faint that morning. It's a lot, it's a whole lot to put into your head the night before the exam. It's a whole, it's not like, biology now this is not biology we're talking about it like it's not wise it's not even healthy for you to, to do that so if you're a last minute person coming from pre-medical school you need to you may, you may have to drop some of these traits to help you when you're in med school if you give up too easily um in medical school you need to keep pushing that's one thing about med school that i have learned personally you need to keep pushing especially if you're studying medicine in this country it's frustrating strike will come to in the middle like you need to just keep pushing it gets hard it gets tough it gets annoying it gets miserable but you can't afford to be that person that gives up easily on things because sometimes people ask me how is it going i say we're pushing it because it can get very very frustrating ah your reading is not entering sleep for 30 minutes wake up try again you will meet obstacles really in this country all of a sudden there's no light in your hostel no light anywhere not in the rooms you can't charge your phone Bring it, look for light. You can't afford to give up. If you give up, you will just, the world will just keep moving. That's just it. So if there's someone that gives up, is the, I'm a baby. I need to see what happened. Make it happen. Like, it gets to that point, actually, where you're like, actually, anything will happen. Make it happen. But before you get to that point, you would have pushed and pushed and pushed. Like, you would have tried at least and moved a little bit further just to make sure that you get to a point, like, at least you have tried. Because if you are doing anything that's happening, you keep doing anything that's happening, you'll be in the class, you cannot hear anything. It's hot, it's frustrating. You're reading back to back, because it's coming, you're still in class, you're still trying to learn. Like, you still have to do by four. Like, you just want to go and sleep. You just keep pushing. You just keep pushing. You just keep Because before you know it, you get there, and you come out. And you'll be wondering, how did I even do it? Like, a lot of times I look back at a lot of things in this MD. So of my professional is I was like, how did I even do this? I look back. I'm like, so I try to say that I did like I did it. You get so medical school just keep pushing and pushing and pushing. If you're someone that gives up too easily, you need to drop that trait and learn to keep pushing because it takes a lot of it takes a lot of perseverance to be in medical school. You need to keep push for you to be able to survive in this place. You need to because it is a jungle here. Medical school, it is a jungle. You need to Pushing. You know you want to get MBBS. You shall want to be a doctor. You don't end up dropping out. People drop out of medical school every now and then. People come and go. People drop out of medical school every now and then. Not even just MBBS. Pharmacy, different courses. People drop out a lot. A lot of times because their mental health cannot carry it anymore. So you have to just try and keep telling yourself that you just need to keep pushing till you get that your degree. They will frustrate you. They will frustrate you. But you push till you get your degree. These are the things that I feel like if you want to survive med school, you need to drop.
try not to cry about things try to work with people try not to do things last minute and try not to give up so easily thank you guys for watching if you enjoyed this video please give it a big thumbs up if this video was helpful to you you can give this video a very very big thumbs up please don't forget to subscribe don't forget to share till next time bye next thing is uh, what's the next thing okay i don't forget <laughs> i'm sorry what's the next thing um uh, hey <laughs>